Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 12.12 mid-patch update. We'll provide updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on balance changes from the patch. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's get started. First we'll start off with the top laners. After a brief vacation in the S tier, we're moving Mordekaiser back up to the OP tier. As other top picks have been hit with small buffs and nerfs lately, the small shifts to the meta are slightly favored towards him. With Fiora and Muno getting nerfed this patch, two of his toughest matchups just got quite a bit easier. And now, there aren't really many good picks that you can just take to try to shit him down. Mordekaiser's only real weakness is that he's somewhat kiteable, but if you're just right clicking range champions in fights, you're playing him wrong anyway. With his ultimate, you have the option of removing some of the other high priority targets and fights, whether it's a carry or some diver that you just want to get off your backline. Shen also gets moved up to the OP tier. With the meta being largely dominated by other tanks and juggernauts, his Q's percentage based damage makes him a really strong counterpick in most games. Unlike some other tanks, who tend to just group up and try to win fights with the team, as Shen you'll be giving yourself a lot more individual carrying power, since his primary job is to split push post laning phase. If you build them correctly, he can even match the super scaling picks like Fiora and Jax at the later stages of the game. After a bit of a timeout, we're moving Kale back up to the S tier. A hyperscaling champion being around a 52% win rate means that you'll still be scaling a little bit too reliably. This may be a bit subjective to say, but I think Kale should be even considered a bit better than her stats show. The average gold to plat player doesn't really necessarily have the best wave management skills. If you can improve those fundamentals, you can easily make her look like an OP tier champion once you start consistently making it to the mid game without being too far behind. Lilia drops down to the S tier. Surprisingly, as tankier and tankier champions have taken over the OP tier, Lilia has actually gotten a little bit weaker. She's still a more than solid choice, but she just isn't able to be much of a wrecking ball as she once was when there are more bruisers being played in the top lane. The biggest reason is that, while she may still win just as hard against tanks as she did against bruisers, tanks aren't nearly as shut down when behind. Bruisers need to be ahead so they can just be more durable in fights and actually pose a threat as a damage dealer. But even when behind, tanks can always fulfill the role of being a beefy frontliner. Mundo gets demoted to the A tier. We knew this nurse would hurt, but we didn't know it was going to hurt this much. But as we've explained before, he's a stat check champion, so even a seemingly small nerve can have a huge impact on whether he's capable of doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's still all around good, but you just won't be a huge wrecking ball that rolls the map at two items. Much like Mundo, we only dropped Fiora a single tier. But that was before Riot changed her nerve from some base damage of her passive to the scaling it has. Hitting her late game so hard definitely made Fiora a lot weaker than before. She's still definitely playable, but you just need to be really mechanically solid to make her work in all matchups. Pantheon gets dropped down to the B tier. The only time you really want to pick him is as a specific counterpick to shut down the early game champions. Outside of that niche, she just doesn't have too much of an impact in the top lane, since you can't really make use of his ultimates to roam compared to when you play him mid. Swank is knocked down to the B tier. He's still a scaling monster if you can safely make it to the mid game, but the issue is, the top lane isn't nearly as safe for Swain as mid. Before his last round of nerfs, he was so overtuned that the shorter lane wasn't really that much of an issue. But now that those have gone through, you need a really low threat opponent to be able to make it out of the laning phase in one piece. Rankar is also being moved down to the B tier. He's still one of the very best performing top laners in high elo, but that requires a lot of mastery over the champion and some really good individual mechanics and macro. And you just don't really see that level of consistency in the mid-range elos that this video is targeted at. Cassiopeia is yet another champion moving down to the B tier for this patch. She's become a much more situational champion now. She's great against foes that don't pose much of a threat early on, but since a lot of top laners are really great at early all-ins, the times that you want to pick her are few and far between. Folly is the one champion that is moving up to the B tier. He's really good in certain matchups and is honestly really close to being considered A tier. That being said, if you really like playing him, there's still not really much reason to play him in the top lane when he's still a disgustingly strong jungler. Lastly for this role, we have Rumble moving down to the B tier. He's just so, so bad in the top lane and you're going to be trolling if you lock him in in any matchup. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Belveth is being moved up all the way to the OP tier. We thought the big nerf that she had this patch would surely be enough to bring her down a few notches, but the Empress of the Void is just way too strong for that. It's almost like the changes never happened, with her being so hard for people to deal with that her ban rate is at around a 70% mark right now. I don't think I've seen a champion be banned that much since Aphelios' release, when he was literally permabanned in high elo Korean solo queue. Diana has been moved up to the S tier. The durability patch really hit her hard at first, but as players adapted to the changes, she stabilized and is right back to being a super strong pick. Warwick also gets promoted to the S tier. His super strong dueling and ability to build to be super durable makes him good in both 1v1s and 5v5s. And his incredibly easy kit makes him a pick that you can very consistently get results on, since you won't have to worry about mechanical mishaps. 
If you don't main jungle but get filled, this is the pick that you should be going for. The seemingly small buff to Nunu on patch 12.11 has been really raising his numbers up, so we have no choice but to put him back up in the S tier. It feels like we're right back to Season 11, when Nunu is one of the most obnoxious champions to play against. He's mechanically super easy, leaves little counterplay for his opponents, and if the lanes aren't totally inting, he can totally hard carry the early game with his constant ganks and objective control. The only reason he doesn't belong in the OP tier right now is because he doesn't have too much hard saloon carry potential when you're the only one doing well. Kane in both of his forms is still doing pretty well, so we're moving him up to the A tier. He's still pretty strong compared to most other picks in this tier, so he's bordering on moving up to the S tier. Rangar moves down to the B tier. He's good if you can still ball hard with him, but he's not doing that consistently enough to be considered any better than this in the middle elos. Much like with the top lane, he's a lot better in higher elos, where having good fundamentals really make him an absolute terror. We were hopeful that the buffs would bring Ivern back up to the B tier, but he's right back down to being a C level pick. Even in the best case scenarios, he's just such a bad pick, and there's always better options out there. Now, let's move to our mid lane tier list. The Seraphine buffs are treating her super well in the mid lane, so she's moving right back up to the OP tier here. We knew that she'd be insanely broken as a bot laner, since she was already pretty much a god tier down there, but we didn't expect her to be so strong here as well. If playing a champion that neutralizes all matchups, outscales almost everybody else in the game for 5v5s, and is soldier easy to play all sounds good to you, then you need to start abusing this pick ASAP. I don't know why Riot is going so psycho with the Seraphine buffs, but they really need to get it through their heads. Just because support is her most popular role, she shouldn't be balanced around that when she's so, so strong as a carry that takes the farm. Bordercaster also moves up to the OP tier. We had him in the B tier before because he was considered more of a situational pick that you would just go for to counter the other melee champions. The thing is, he's doing super well into all matchups now. Against melees, you just absolutely smash them anytime they move up to CS. Against ranged champions, the combination of Doran's shield, second wind, and his W allows you to very easily shrug off their poke. If they focus too hard on trying to whittle you down, they just end up going oom and missing farm under tower, while you're free to reset or roam as you please. We're moving Anivia right back up to the S tier. She's very safe and reliable, but not quite putting up the numbers to compete with the other champions in the OP tier right now. We weren't really too sure how much the nerfs to both Predator and Cinch himself would affect him, so we kept him in the S tier until we saw for sure. Turns out, even with all of that, Singe mid is by no means dead, but is definitely not doing quite as well as it was before, so we're moving him down to the A tier. You can still get results with it, but it's just not nearly as crazy as it was before. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Seraphine is already in our OP tier, so she can't go up any higher, but if you were ever to make a god tier to go even higher than that, this would be the time to do so. I know that we already talked about her when we went over our mid laners, but Seraphine in the bot lane is just absolutely ridiculous. Most of you, including me, are just too busy complaining about champions like Belveth and Swain, but Seraphine is just chilling down there with a 58% win rate. That's the farthest thing from OK in a long, long time. And again, she's insanely easy to play. Twitch moves up to the OP tier. When he removes Seraphine from the equation, he's just about equal to all the other picks in this tier. Obviously, his early game's a bit weaker than Jin, but he makes up for it with his mid game assassination potential and the insane late game carrying that he has in team fights. Heimerdinger also moves up to the OP tier. We knew this patch would make him strong, but we underestimated just how strong. He's right back to being the auto win lane king in the bot lane. To finish things off, we have our supports. We warned you that moving Janet down to the S tier was tentative in the patch rundown. And turns out, we were right to be hesitant. She's still doing super well, and she's right back up to the OP tier. I wish Riot would just go ham on the nerves with champions like this that have just been so dominant for so, so long. I'd rather see her be at the bottom of the list than just be knocked down a notch, or not at all in this case. Seraphine moves up to the S tier. That being said, as we said before, there's just no reason to play her here when she's so strong in the other two roles. S tier may be really good compared to the other champions in this specific role, but it's just nowhere as impactful as when you're taking the farm for yourself. Fiddle 6 moves up to the S tier. He may seem somewhat off meta, but that doesn't mean that he isn't good. He provides a lot of pressure in lane and has the same ultimate that makes him a monster in teamfights as he would have as a jungler. And as an added bonus, his passive gives him even more vision control, since you can place them in addition to the wards from your support item. While her stats aren't all that crazy, we're moving Ash up all the way to the S tier. This is a calculated choice, and not some random feely craft. Ash's stats are massively tanked by people randomly first-timing her when they get auto-filled, or even just support players that have no idea what makes her so broken. They just see her being abused in high elo, and they think they can copy it and do it well. When you're actually using her kit properly, she's absolutely insane, with the ability to stomp lane and constantly make picks and engage fights later on. 
And that wraps things up for our mid-patch 12.12 update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list in the comment section down below. Also, check out our description for the link to join our Discord community. And as always, you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.